praise in this house. Come on, lift up a shout of praise in the house. Hallelujah. Jesus reigns. He reigns this morning. He rules. He has all of the power. And we bless him. We magnify him. We glorify him. He's an awesome God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. It's all right to clap your hands. Come on, everybody. Come on. Yes, Lord, we've come to bless him. We've come to magnify him. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We bless you this morning. We bless you. Thank you, Jesus. He's awesome.
ready to do for you this year, will you lift up your hands, open your mouth, and shout unto God with the voice of triumph. High five somebody and tell them, Jesus reigns. He's gonna reign over your money, reign over your family, reign over your health, reign in your mind, reign in your body, reign in your job. Somebody say, reign on me, God. Let your authority reign on me. Will you do me a favor? Will you lift your hands? If you have your heavenly language, would you go into it right now? Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, I wish somebody who knew how to talk to God, if you have your heavenly language, go in. If you speak in the natural, go in. But right now, I want you to have a moment in the spirit because God is getting ready to do something in your life. And I want your prayer to position you. Somebody say, my prayer positions me. Come on, open up your mouth. Chronicles chapter 20 verse 20 says this so they arose early in the morning and went out in the wilderness and as they went out Jehoshaphat stood and said hear me O Judah and inhabitants of Jerusalem watch what it says it says believe in the Lord your God and you will be established Believe his prophet and you will prosper. For this moment of prayer, I want to pray two things over your life. That you would believe God and that you would believe his prophet. I don't know about you, but I'm praying for my prophet. Because I promise you everything that our prophet says in this house is going to position us to prosper. Can I pray that real quickly, Father, in the name of Jesus? Touch my prophet now. Give him a word of wisdom right now to speak to the areas of my life that shifts me into purpose, that moves me into a greater space of your anointing. God, make my prophet so anointed that it causes me to extremely be blessed in every area of my life. Lord, I declare right now, because of the words of my prophet, I will be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in my going out, blessed in my coming in, blessed in my down setting, and blessed in my uprising. God, I thank you for my leader, because my leader is positioning me to prosper. Somebody shall prosper. Lord, I thank you that I prosper in everything I touch and in everything I do. This is my prayer. In Jesus' name, clap your hands if you're going to prosper this year. Somebody say, Amen. Bless the Lord, we bless the Lord. Let us join together as we sing our morning hymn, All Hail the Power.
opportunity to celebrate the sacred sacrament of communion. It is the epicenter of our faith. We are the only religion in the world that can boast of a savior who was born, who lived, who died, who rose again, and he's coming back. Does anybody know his name? To know that while we were yet sinners, he died for us. He was wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon his shoulders, and by his stripes we are healed. Amazingly, we are able to sit around this sacred table to begin a brand, not just day, brand new day, not just a brand new year, but a brand new decade. The Bible gives us the understanding if you confess your sins, He's faithful and he's just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Before we partake of his body, would you take 
One moment we do a whole lot of celebration, but not much repentance. I need you to just think about what it is that you have done to fall short of his glory by thought, by word, and by deed. Collectively, would you declare out loud, Lord, I'm sorry. Now, true repentance is not just language. It's a change of behavior. So things I used to do, I can't do no more. Places I used to go, I can't go anymore. I want all of you, if you'll have your communion receptacle at your disposal, and ask that you'll ever so carefully pull back the first level of it. Once you have done so, would you lift that wafer above your head? Jesus commandeered all of the disciples into the upper room and he pulled out a loaf of bread. He broke it in their midst and said to them, this is my body. It's broken for you. I want you, while it's in your hand, would you break it right in your hand? That's what the enemy tried to do to you the last 10 years. He's been trying to break you, trying to make you crumble, trying to make you fall apart. But by the grace of God, you're still here and you're still standing for the body of our Lord and Savior that was crucified for people like you and for me. Would you please take an eat? Ever so carefully pulling back the second level of your receptacle. Lift it ever so carefully. Jesus then brought out a flask of wine began to pour it and he said to the disciples, this is my blood that is shed for you. New birth, I've got to ask you a question. What can wipe away my sin? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. I'm telling you this year, you're not gonna need alcohol to take the edge off. You're not gonna need any weed to clear your head. You're not going to need to pop any pills in order to escape. Everything you need is right in that cup. It's what theologians call transubstantiation. That everything that was in the blood is now in that cup. For the blood that was shed for sinners like Jamal Bryant and sinners like you. Would you please take and drink? The disciples said, Master, we've got some difficult days ahead. How ought we pray? It's in that moment that he taught them the Lord's Prayer. Let's pray it together. Our Father. Amen. Would you hug somebody around you, tell them this is going to be a great year for you. This is going to be a great year. where we pass the peace. Somebody say, pass the peace. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. It's our time where we get to love on those who are here with us in the sanctuary and we get to welcome our family who are visiting with us virtually. Listen, hug the person next to you and tell them that you are glad that they are here. If you are visiting with us for the first time or you are visiting reoccurringly, welcome on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryant. Listen, we want you to tap the person next to you, find the cutest person on your row, and tell them it's time to take an ussy. Pull out your phones right now, and we want you to take an ussy, and we want you to hashtag that new birth now. Somebody say new birth now. Welcome.
If you're excited that 2020 is going to be the best year of your life. Come on, you don't sound like it. You sound like 2017. If you believe 2020 is going to be the best year of your life. You may be seated. Would you smile like you happy to be here? Come on. I don't know how you feel about it, but how many of you were excited about New Year's Eve at New Birth? What an amazing, what an amazing opportunity. The reality is he didn't have to let us live, but he did. And because of that, we give him praise. We give him glory, we give him a thanksgiving. I know we're just five days into the new year, but does anybody have anything to give God glory for? Anybody? Let me try that again. In just the first five days, has God already shown you you are on his mind? In the first five days. First five days, you are on the mind of God. Would you lay your hands on yourself and declare it out loud? I am on the mind of God. Come on, lay your hands on yourself and declare out loud, God is working on a plan to bless me in the next seven days. If you believe it, come on, give God glory if you believe that. Uh, what do you give the God that has absolutely everything? You give him your obedience. You give him your mind. You give him your hands. Uh, you understand anthropomorphically God has no hands but our hands. He has no feet but our feet. And so we've got to work while it is yet day. Because night is coming and no man knows the day or the hour. God loves what kind of giver? What kind of giver? I want you to secure your Bibles. I want you to travel with me very quickly uh, to a couple of parcels of Scripture that resonated uh, with me in my devotion this week. I want you to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Not Chronicles, Corinthians. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. If you see 2 Corinthians, you've gone too far. If you see 3 Corinthians, that is not a Bible you have. 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse number 2. I want you to see what it says in 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse number 2. Every man shall give. Every woman shall give. Every person shall give. And the reason why I want you to see it, it doesn't say that some will give. It says every person is giving. Why? Because every person has a responsibility. We're not giving the same, but we're giving a commensurate to where it is that we are in this station in life. I want you to look down your row. And would you look down your row and declare out loud, the Lord expects every person on this row to give. The Lord is looking for us to operate this year in the spirit of uniformity. He's looking for us to operate in the Kwanzaa principle of cooperative works. How we understand something critical. I want you to go now into the Old Testament. Go to Deuteronomy chapter 14. 1 Corinthians, it doesn't say that some should give. It doesn't say just the wealthy should give, just the affluent, just those who've been members a long time. It says every person in the building has to give. All right, it took you too long. Go to Malachi chapter 3. <laughs> Malachi chapter 3. Malachi chapter 3, look at verse number 10. Malachi chapter 3, go to verse number 10. And once you get to Malachi chapter 3, verse number 10, I want all of us to read it aloud. 
If you didn't bring your Bible, it's on your closest screen. Come on, let's read it together. Bring the whole tithe. Verse number 11. Let's go to verse 11. Can we do that? Come on, let's read that one out loud. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your field will not drop their fruit before it's ripe. Thus says the Lord Almighty. He says, when you bring your tithe into my house, I need you to know what's getting ready to happen. I'm getting ready to open up a window. I'm opening up a window, and I'm pouring out a blessing. Uh, so many preachers have misconfigured and debacled this text. When he's opening up a window, here it is, and pouring out a blessing. Here's what I need you to know. Has anybody ever seen a car come out of a window? You, you ain't never seen that, have you? Anybody ever seen a house come out of a window? So when he says, when you bring your tithe into my house, I'm opening up a window so I can pour out a blessing. The window, here it is, is revelation. I'm helping you to see things differently. I'm giving you an eye for that which is creative, that which is novel, that which does not exist. How many of you want to see some things this week? He says, when I open up this window, I am now pouring out a blessing. Here it is. And that one blessing is going to be so big, there won't be room for nothing else. Y'all just missed what I just said. I hope somebody has the heart and the spirit to know that my next blessing is going to be so big, I won't have to ask God for nothing else. When this one blessing comes, I won't even have to pray the same. I won't be asking for anything. I'll just thank him. Now, some of y'all can't shout because this is only for tithers. He said, when you tithe in my house, not only am I opening up revelation, not only is innovation coming, not only is a big blessing coming where you won't have room for any other blessings. He says, I am stopping every pest that's trying to take your stuff. <laughs> every bill collector, I can't hear nobody. Every IRS agent, every greedy relative, I'm stopping everybody that's trying to take your money. Then he says, I'm putting my name on it. I'm believing that this year God is gonna do something miraculous for people who are in lockstep with the vision of this house. I want you, wherever it is that you are, I want you to get uh, your wallet, I want you to get your purse, your pocketbook, whatever it is that you keep your currency in, I want you to get it in your hand and lift it above your head. Old school players, lift up your rubber band. <laughs> whatever it is you got that's holding your money, I want you to lift it up. Not just your envelope, I'm asking you to lift up what holds your money. Your wallet, your purse, coin purse, checkbook. All you brought in was your debit card because you were scared I was coming to get it. <laughs> I speak over every portal of finance that 2020 is going to be the wealthiest year of your life. Everything that you have amassed before this year will pale in comparison to what God is going to do this year. I believe whatever was the amount of your paycheck last year will be the amount of your tithe this year. I better say it again for somebody that got faith. I believe whatever was the amount of your paycheck last year will be the amount of your tithe this year. I believe that God will so bless you that you'll be able to bless people and not look for it back. I pray that God will open up streams of income that your children will drown in. I pray that you will never know that debt another day in your life. I speak over every lifted hand that every bill that comes to your house 
it shall be paid within the first 30 days. And those of you who have the God kind of faith, would you open up your mouth and give God glory now? Come on, give God glory now. There's a principle called the law of first mention. The law of first mention suggests whatever you do first sets the precedent and the principle, the paradigm, and the structure of everything that's going to come thereafter. On this, the first Sunday of 2020, even our friends who are watching us, worshiping with us virtually, I want you please to know that this is a seed that is going to set the trajectory for the rest of my year. The seed that I sow on today, I'm going to be eating off of it in April. I'm going to see the repercussions of it in October. Albert Einstein said the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing, expecting different results. Those of you who want something different, wave that hand at me. Wave that hand. If you want something different, you got to do something different. Those of you who are not yet at the place of faith to tithe, you've been giving God $20, stretch your faith and go to 40. Say, I'm trusting God. I'm getting there, Pastor. I'm not at 10%. I'm at 5.5, but I'm making my way. I'm believing by faith. You're going to get there. Our ushers are getting ready to come and serve you. Even those of you who are giving electronically, you've got five different platforms to give. Uh, you can give through Push to Pay, Text to Give, GiveLify, or on our secure website at newbirth.org. Once you have your seed in your hand, I pray that you will join in agreement with me today that every person is giving today. Every person is sowing today. Lift up that offering above your head, please. Repeat after me, Lord, thank you for what you did last year, for what you did last month, for what you did last week, for what you did yesterday. But the seed in my hand is an expectation for what you're going to do this year. Amen. Our mighty men of God are coming to receive your seed. After they would have passed your row, if you want to sow for yourself, you're able to do it. Uh, those of you who brought your goals today, you neglected to do so on New Year's Eve. We have a receptacle here on the altar to be able to capture them. Our intercessors are going to be laying over these goals today. They're going to be praying over them on today. Those of you who are part of our virtual family, you want to send in your goals for us to pray over, email them right now at prayer at newbirth.org. Prayer at newbirth.org.
Come on, let's give God a hand clap of praise. Stretch forth your right hand to faith. I want to bless every gift and to every giver. Jesus saw the multitudes. The disciples said, send them away. And he asked them, what do you have? He said, all I got is two fish and five loaves of bread. And he began to multiply it. I declare and decree, God is going to multiply every gift. And he's going to multiply the resources of every giver. By the time your next pay cycle comes back around, you're going to see how God turned two fish and five loaves of bread into a banquet feast. Those of you that believe it, give God glory for it. Bless the Lord. You may be seated for just uh, one moment. If you'll indulge me, if you would, off uh, script, I want to ask uh, those of you who have uh, family members who are in armed services, would you stand? Those of you who got family members in active duty, I want you to stand. Our troops are being deployed uh, this week, uh, and we want to pray over your son, over your daughter. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. We want to pray for them, uh, that God will put a hedge fence of protection over them. If there's somebody standing near you, would you just stretch your hand as close to them as you can? They're standing in the gap for that loved one, for that son, for that daughter, for that sister, for that brother. Lord, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you'll cover them. I pray that warring angels will be at their side. Thank you, dear Lord, that even while they're on the ground, angels will be in the air. Thank you, because we stand in faith. They're not coming back in caskets. They're coming back in strength, in grace, and in mercy. I pray, dear Lord, that you will touch the mind of this president. That this will be a season not of war, but a season of peace. And those of you who come into agreement with your pastor, come on and give God glory even now. Those of you who are standing, remain standing for just one moment. New birth, would you help me? Would you embrace those who are standing? Tell them we're praying for your family. We're praying for your family. You are. You pray. you pray for me, I love you, I need you to, I want to harm you, I won't, I with words from my mouth, with words from my just mouth. because I love I you, love. I need you, I need you to, it is his will, it is his will, that I need me supply, yes, you're to point you are. Clap your hands right where you are. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. How, what an amazing day to be alive. Amazing day to be alive. If you'll yield to me uh, a point of personal privilege today uh, is Founders Day for Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated. I feel some haters right over here. I, I, <laughs> Amen. Let me ask all of uh, the fine gentlemen of Cap Alpha Psi, won't you please stand? Won't you please stand? Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Good looking black men. Thank y'all. Making a difference, making an impact. Making a difference, making an impact. Uh, today is going to be a critical day. It's a critical day. I I'm starting, uh, you may be seated, gentlemen. Uh, I'm starting a, uh, a new series on today uh, for the entire month of January. The entire month of January uh, on a plant-based diet. A plant-based diet. That's what I'm preaching on the whole month of January. I need you to do me a favor. How many of you all know you got to get your eating in order? You got to... You got to get your diet in check. Amen. I, I want you to do me a favor. Would you take one moment? Would you text somebody in your family, uh, somebody who you care about, a loved one who's eating pancakes and bacon right now? <laughs> You'll text them right now. Tell them to come into our virtual worship experience 
uh, at newbirth.org. I'm going to be uh, talking about it the whole month. Hear me, uh, a whole lot of principles and points, insights, uh, and treasure troves of uh, uh, nuggets that I want to dispatch into you today. Our music ministry is going to prepare our hearts for uh, the word of God. Uh, after they would have concluded, ask that you would please, please gird up yourself. We're going to be in Ecclesiastes chapter 3. You're not going to believe it. We're going to be in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 all year. All year. We're going to be in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 because there's a time for everything. I need you to look at the person beside you telling me it's my time now. It's, it's my time now. We're going to be in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 uh, all year. We begin today in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verses 1 and 2. Our music ministry is going to prepare the atmosphere for the word of God. Hallelujah. There's a new song that we want to present to you this morning. It says, you have rescued my life and I will never go back. I don't know about you, but I am so grateful that the Lord rescued me from the whole year of 2019. Some of you have been rescued from low self-esteem, broken hearts. If you don't mind, just lift your hands in the atmosphere and say, thank you for rescuing me, Lord. Come on, church, let me hear you say, thank you for rescuing me, Lord. Yes, Lord, we bless him, we honor him, we magnify his name. It just says this, you have rescued my life you have rescued my life and i'm never going back can you lift that up sing it say you have rescued my life it's real simple sing you have rescued my life and i'm never going back Speak it into the atmosphere. Saying you have rescued. Let me hear your church say you have rescued my life. And I'm never, I'm never, never, never going back. Come on, let's lift it up all over the room. Saying you have, come on, come on, speak and say you have rescued my life. Say, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. 
Come on, let's sing it. You have. Come on, sing it big. You have. And I never. Come on, lift it up. You can lift it up bigger than that. Sing, you have. You have. And I never. Let's be grateful about it this morning. You have rescued my life. And I'm so grateful. And I'm able. Sing, you have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. You have rescued my life. Heads are bowed, all eyes are closed. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Lord, you are my strength. You are my redeemer. Amen. Would you get your Bibles and meet me in Ecclesiastes chapter 3? Ecclesiastes chapter 3. Verses 1 and 2. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 and 2. Once you found it, won't you say, I got it? If you can't find it, say, Lord, help me. Amen. Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 and 2. We're going to read it together with uplifted voices. Come on, everybody. There's a time for everything. Time to be born. Verse number two. Let's read it again with a little bit more vigor and vitality. A time to be born. If you'll now uh, go to Psalm 144. Psalm 144. Psalm 144. Verse number 12. Psalm 144, verse 12. Come on, let's declare together. Then our sons in their youth will be like well-nurtured plants and our daughters will be like pillars carved to adorn a palace. Come on, let's read it again with a greater energy. Come on. Then our sons Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Uh, would you please uh, arm yourself with a writing instrument? Those of you who are technologically savvy, I uh, ask that you'll go to the place in your smartphone, your tablet, your device, uh, that allows you to take notes. There are some critical things that I want to share with you that I don't want you to leave here, but I want you to take home with you. I, I, I want to um, preach for a little while today using as a subject, you are what you eat. You are what you eat. Some of y'all are in trouble. Turn to the person beside you and tell them, did you hear what pastor said? Look him in the eye and tell him, you are what you eat. Thomas Colin Campbell, 
Cornell University biochemist who claims responsibility for coining the term said he came up with the phrase, a plant-based diet to help present his research to skeptical colleagues in the National Institute of Health in 1980. It was his intention to convince his colleagues that the theory is based on nature and not philosophy. Proven data published in the Journal of the American Heart Association dictates that sticking to an overall plant-based diet produces a 16% lower risk of cardiovascular disease. If you're on a plant-based diet, you have a 32% less chance of dying from cardiovascular disease. If you're on a plant-based diet, up to 25% lower risk of early death, here it is, from any cause. Plant-based diets emphasize higher intake of vegetables and lower intake of animals. Food derived from plants include fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and legumes. Whereas animal foods include meat, eggs, and dairy. I want you to know that in the book of Genesis, Adam and Eve had a plant-based diet, hear this, until sin. So man's creation never partook of meat until the serpent came in and they got thrown out. As long as they were in God's presence, all they had was a plant-based diet. I speak over the life of every person who's in this room who has ears to hear that this year you will experience a life of paradise. Imagine what your life could live and feel like if you lived a life with no snakes. Therefore, I'm challenging our congregation to collectively, I'm challenging this entire congregation physically and virtually to participate in a plant-based diet for the rest of January. It's your challenge. Those of you who are not at that level of faith <laughs> for a plant-based diet for the whole month of January, I want you to meet us halfway with Meatless Mondays. Meet us halfway with Meatless Mondays. I want to share with you uh, some supportive resources uh, that will help us in our journey to get through January. Some of y'all are saying, I don't need resource, I need prayer. <laughs> a couple of websites I want to share with you, ask that you'll please take them down. All of us are going to move in lockstep this month. I, I want you to uh, visit oldwayspt.org, oldwayspt.org how to shift the diet of your entire family, how to help your children eat healthily. Oldwayspt.org. Second website I want you to have is farmsanctuary.org. Farmsanctuary.org that you'll know that don't you know your body is a temple your body is a temple it is a place to be worshipped to be valued and to not be taken lightly curators right in our sanctuary I'm thankful uh, for them uh, another website beyondher.com beyondher.co thank you 
beyondher.co, and it shows you how to do a, appropriate grocery shopping. For your first seven days, it will write out for you what are the meals you should eat and how it is that you ought to take the first progressive steps. Crash course for some of us who are coming kicking and screaming. Outside of our church today is the slutty vegan truck. Help you get in line for what it is that you're going to do for the month of January. For those of you who have a doubting Thomas spirit, we send you to Netflix to watch Fork Over Knives. Fork Over Knives is available on Netflix if you are not stealing cable. <laughs> Fork Over Knives. It is my conviction that the church must be concerned not just about your soul if your body is in sin. What is the point of your soul being saved and your body is falling apart? Health is your wealth. I declare it again. I said health is your wealth. I want you to lift up that hand, both of them, please. Lift up that hand. As a priest on assignment over this house, I speak complete health over the bodies of every person in this sanctuary. I pray that even while you rest, angels will be assigned to your area of discomfort and dis-ease. I believe by faith over every lifted hand, even those of you who are watching online, that God this year is going to start peeling you off of prescription medication. Believing by faith for those who are in this room that every illegal growth is about to shrink. That God is going to have your blood pressure where it is supposed to be. I cancel out every disease that runs in your family. Not another person in your family is going to die prematurely. I speak over every lifted hand that you will have a long, healthy, and a fruitful life absent of dementia and Alzheimer's. I declare and decree that you will never need an oxygen tank. I can't hear nobody. You'll never have to submit yourself to chemotherapy. You will never be in dialysis. You will not need assisted living. I can't hear anybody. I declare and decree you're going to be able to drive yourself and dress yourself. I declare and decree no hip replacement, no knee replacement. I declare and decree you will not have trouble sleeping at night. You will not have difficulty breathing. I declare and decree healing over your reproductive organs. I cancel every fibroid, every thyroid. I, I I annihilate every strand of cancer that runs in your family. I declare lupus will not have the best of you. Asthma will not have the best of your children. Autism will not be in your grandchildren. Health will be your friend. And I declare it so in Jesus' name. Those of you that believe it, clap your hands to confirm it. I said clap your hands to confirm it. You're not just clapping for you. I need you to clap for sick relatives. They coming out of that hospital. I can't hear nobody. They shall not die but live to see the salvation of the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm a Hallelujah. I feel glory in this room. Hey, I feel glory in this room. I need you to just lay hands on your neighbor and declare out loud, you are healed. You are healed. 2020, no allergies. I can't hear nobody. You are 
I heal, no acid reflux. You I heal, no problems with digestion. You I heal. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know who I'm talking to, but God said the screamers just got the surgery canceled. The screamers just canceled their own funeral. The screamers will not live years in pain. Somebody declared out loud, I am healed. Amen. In sixth grade, you may be seated, in sixth grade we were first introduced to homonyms. Homonyms are words that are spelled the same, sound the same, but have two different meanings. For parents frustrated in checking homework, you forgot what homonyms are. Homonyms, example is express. E-X-P-R-E-S-S, -S, express. It means something done fast. Hallelujah. Something done fast. I need God. I know what's wrong with y'all. It's, it's something I need him to do. I, I, I can tell some of y'all have never got a package from Federal Express. It is faster than regular mail. But it's valuable, here it is. And because it's valuable, Federal Express can't just leave it. You gotta sign for it. God, God, I can't hear nobody. Those of you that need God to do something fast, your shout is you signing for it, God. I need you to send it overnight. means to send or done fast or it is to show your thoughts by using words. It's uh, express yourself how you really feel. Uh, another example is uh, address. Address. A-D-D-R-E-S-S. -S. Address is uh, speaks to a location. I need somebody, would you just say your address out loud? Say your address. Now y'all see how that's coming together? I, I, I need something express. Where you need it? At my address. Hallelujah. Everything you just shouted for is coming to your house. Here's your shout by 12 noon. I, I, I need God to, to send it express. I need him to send it to my address. It, it is a location. Here it is. Uh, it is a location or it is to speak to something. Watch this. Express uh, means it's coming fast or to show your thoughts. Address is to speak to something or a location. Last homonym uh, is match, M-A-T-C-H. Match is, uh, uh, is uh, a pair of like items. It's uh, two of the same. So I need him uh, to send something express. I need him to send it to my address. But whatever he's sending, I don't want just one of it. My oh God, I can't hear nobody. The people who ain't shouting don't expect double portion. But those of y'all that need a double portion for what God is going to do. I, I need him to express it. Hallelujah. 
I need it at my address. And I don't want one of them. I need. Now, that, 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 that's a match. Now, uh, a match, because it's a homonym, it's spelled the same way, uh, but has a different uh, meaning to it, is you need a match to start a fire. See, I'm, I'm, I'm scared of folk who don't like turning to their neighbor. God help me, who, who, who got a problem when I instruct you uh, to give somebody a high five? The, the, those of y'all that came through Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts knew that if you put two pieces of wood together, God help me, something is going to catch on fire. Would you look at your neighbor and say, you sure you want to sit next to me? I'm expecting something express is coming to my address. It's going to be a double portion. And when it comes, I'm going to catch on fire. God is about to release. Now that, that, that's, that's, a, that, 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 that's a homonym. To express address and a match. I need all three of them. Something express, I need to come to my address and I wanted it to match. So when I got to Ecclesiastes chapter three, I get to Ecclesiastes chapter three, um, it was written by the wisest man who ever lived named Solomon, who said in verse number one, there's a time for everything and for every activity under heaven. In verse two, he declares, there's a time to be born and there's a time to die. Hallelujah. I need somebody to announce to the universe, would you declare out loud, it's not my time to die. I can't believe y'all didn't say that with a little more gumption. Would you declare out loud, it's not my time to die. That, that, there was a man by the name of Hezekiah who got a word from God. This is the year you're going to die. Get your stuff together. Hezekiah said, you ain't talking to me. He turned to the wall and started worshiping God. Do you know what God did? God added 15 years to his life. I'm getting ready to say something to 50 of y'all that don't mind shouting. You better tear your row up. God told me to tell you he owes you 15 years for whatever you've had to go through in the last 15 years he owes you 15 years says something says there's a time to be born and there's a time to die but you've announced to the universe this is not your time to die the next clause, the next clause is what uh, crossed me up. I'm in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 2. It messed me up. Watch this. Uh, it says, there's a time to plan. Do y'all see it in your Bibles? It says, there's a time to plan. Now, in the context of the text, I know it's speaking to sowing a seed for an organic substance to manifest at another time. I am practicing, I'm turning myself in, I am practicing willful ignorance because the intention of Solomon was talking about planting or sowing. I am practicing willful ignorance by operating under the canopy of a homonym. He said, it's a time to plant and I am not talking about how Solomon meant it in terms of planting but a plant itself. A plant, watch this, is in itself is a multicellular uh, process that is nourishment that goes through photosynthesis. A plant can be a tree, it can be a shrub, or even a young tree. So for some reason, after I read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse number 2, it's a time to plant. I went to Psalm 144, verse number 12. 
Psalm 144, verse number 12, watch, it, watch, watch what it says. Our sons will be like well-nurtured plants. Solomon, watch this, who is the father of David, said that there is a time for plants. And he says that David, the son of Solomon, says that, that your son is going to be like a plant. All right, y'all are slow. Let me see if I can help you. Uh, so uh, when it is that I got to this place, I said, I'm no longer, I'm no longer. I've got too much theological training to really uh, tear apart this text. And so I said, I ain't even going to let uh, Jamal preach the rest of the sermon. I, I, I'm not going to let Jamal preach the rest of this sermon because uh, I've got too much theological homiletical integrity to go away from what Solomon intended. So the plant said, Jamal, let me preach uh, the rest of this sermon. I said, so the plant, you can have it. He said, uh, let me preach. When I preach, I'm going to tell New Birth why they got to be like a plant in 2020. Uh, this is why they got to be like a plant in 2020. Come here. I don't want you to miss it. He said, Jamal, tell New Birth plants are different than how they were in 2019. Number one, watch this, because plants don't set limits for how big they can grow. Y'all just missed that. When a plant is growing, it never says, I'm only going to go three feet. I'm only going to go five feet. It says I'm just going to keep growing until I can't go no further. God told me to tell you this is the year you got to take the limits off. No longer are you going to cower down to other people's small expectation. You're going to be so big that when you walk in the room, insecure people going to have an attitude. You're going to be so big, you're not even going to need a title you're not gonna need a business card you're not gonna need to network folk are gonna ask you what is the secret to your success and you gotta tell them you don't know the size of my god god is gonna make it bigger The Lord told the children of Israel, 12 of y'all, go into the promised land and tell me, do you think we can get it? And the Bible said they came back and said, we are grasshoppers in our own eyes. I am dispatching you in 2020 to operate in apostolic arrogance. What is apostolic arrogance is folk that don't understand my favor are going to think I'm stuck up. But they don't understand it ain't me. It's the God that's in me. It's anything too hard for my God. Plants don't set limits for how big they can get. I said, plant, is that all you got to say to new birth going into 2020? It's the first Sunday of the decade. He says, no, I, I need you to tell them point number two is that plants know that the struggle is their strength. The struggle is their strength. Frederick Douglass said, without a struggle, there can be no progress. I need you to know if you walk out of here and you see a caterpillar stuck in a cocoon, whatever you do, don't you open that cocoon for it. It's going to die. They need the struggle of getting out of the cocoon for the blood to go through their wings. I think I lost somebody. Some of you all been holding grudges against people who didn't help you while you were struggling. God said, Jamal, tell them I would let them help help you. I needed you to go through the struggle so you would know if you struggle with me, you go reign with me. Don't y'all shout if you ain't had a struggle last year. But if you had the struggle to get to where you are, you're stronger. Your struggle is your strength trees exposed to the elements they grow thicker and they get stronger based off of the environment that they are in god help me to preach it right there are some people in the room who don't understand that life helped you get tough skin so now i ain't even tripping when you don't like me 
I can't hear nobody. It don't even matter to me that you don't call me back. You think I'm in my feelings because you ain't invite me to go out with y'all? I like being at home. I, I got thick skin because of the stuff I've been in. I said, Plant, is that all you want to preach? He said, no, I got a third point. He says, uh, says, tell them uh, what plants do that people don't understand is that plants, here it is, know how to adapt to any season. Plants can adapt to any season. They're frugal in the winter. They got new growth in the spring. They save up energy in the summer. And in the autumn, here it is, they know how to release stuff without missing it. Because <laughs> they know whatever they release is going to grow back. Some of y'all don't know how to give God glory. Every now and again, you got to give God glory for what left you. Because God brought you here the first Sunday of January to say whatever left you, here's your shout, is about to be replaced. Whatever it is you don't have anymore, thank God for what is getting ready to take his place. I said, is that all you got? He said, no, they don't understand the secret of my strength. I said, plant, I don't even know the secret of your strength. I said, the only way that we able to grow, the only way we're able to develop, the only way that we find strength while we're struggling is the plant, unlike people, know that no matter what you're going through, always face the sun. God, I can't hear nobody. You got to get to a place where you understand I will look to the hills from which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. So, so all you got to do is, uh, is, uh, is face the sun. There was a wealthy man, wealthy man who had uh, a son uh, with Down syndrome. Had a son with Down syndrome, and uh, he, he got an oil painting of him. Got an oil painting of him and went all through the town uh, and says, on Saturday, come by the house. I'm going to do an auction for who in the world uh, wants to get this picture of my son. Everybody in town is talking about him. And nobody in the world wanted to, in fact, make a bid at the auction of the oil painting of this son that got Down syndrome. Because he looks disheveled. He looks uh, like his face is uneven. But still, the father saw the value and the beauty of it, got him painted, and then had enough nerve to put it up for auction. Isn't it amazing? Nobody showed up for the auction of the oil painting of this son except for the housekeeper. Uh, the housekeeper came downstairs and says, I know I ain't got much money, uh, but I want to make a bid. He said, what do you have? Says, I don't have much, but I want to put in a bid because I want a picture of the sun. Says, well, nobody else has shown up. And because nobody else has shown up, I'm giving you the picture. But not only am I giving you the picture, I'm going to give you this mansion. Not only am I going to give you the mansion, I'm going to give you my Bentley. Not only am I going to give you the Bentley, but I'm going to give you my stock portfolio. She stopped crying and said, why in the world are you going to give me that? She said, I'm going to give you that because whoever gets the sun gets everything else. I got to get out of here. If you ever get in contact with the sun, whatever else you are shall be added. I, 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 I got to get out of here. Be seated, please. My time, my time is almost over. Would you look at your neighbor and tell him you can make get everything if you just have the son? Hallelujah. Psalm 144, verse number 12 says, watch this, that your sons will be like plants. But that ain't all that it says. He said, don't you think that all the blessing is for your sons? He said, I got something for the daughters. That the daughters will be like pillars. I remember a young Nazarite by 
the name of Samson. Samson had flowing hair and his hair was his favor. But he ran up on this chick by the name of Delilah who said, show me where your strength is. And he said, my strength is in my hair. She called the CIA. They broke into his apartment. They tied him down. They shaved his head. And he lost his strength. They took him down to the Coliseum. And they tried to make a fool of him. But he said, would you do me a favor? Let my hand touch the pillar. I think y'all lost it. The Bible says that your daughters will be like a pillar. Y'all still didn't hear what I said. Tiffany, come here real quick. He said that the Bible says your daughters will be like a pillar. But Samson lost his strength. Come on, Carrie, I need you real quick. Samson lost all his strength. But what they forgot is that your daughter is a pillar. Samson made up in his mind if I can just touch a strong black woman whatever is wrong with me is getting ready to come back to life I need some sisters here that know it's enough oil on me to bring somebody back to life pull on that neighbor and say neighbor I'm not a pushover but I'm a pillar I'm not to be played with but I'm still here let the redeemed of the Lord shout right now like this will be the strongest year of my life I said push that neighbor and tell him you'll be here you shall not die you gonna multiply I know this is a new generation but when I was growing up we had one little toy it wasn't a wish it wasn't an Xbox it was a Weebo Wobble and there was something about a Weebo Wobble you could push it you could kick it but it wouldn't fall down why? cause it was something in it if you know this year you ain't gonna fall this year you ain't gonna be it don't wait till the battle is over don't wait don't wait don't wait give somebody a high five and tell them this is your healthy year this is your health. You better give three people a high five and tell them I'm stronger now. I never would have made it. 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 But I'm stronger. I'm better. I'm so much better. I wish above all that you would be in health. Did y'all hear what the word says? I wish above all 
that you'll be in health and that your soul shall prosper. I believe that for every believer that's in this room. Your doctor is gonna be astounded at the progress that you've made. That he did it, you did it without him. And they wanna know how you did it. Tell them I got another doctor. I can't hear nobody, he's a doctor in the sick room. He, That hand is lifted. I'm believing by my, by faith that this year we're gonna see miracles in this sanctuary. God, I can't hear no money. I, I said this year we're gonna see miracles in this sanctuary. Hearing is gonna be restored. Limbs are gonna be evened out. Walking is going to be put back in place. But I declare not just health for your body, but I speak health over your mind, over everything that has tried to corrupt your thinking, has interrupted your sleep pattern, has bothered and unnerved your focus. That God has given me give healing to every area of your life. Those of you, your faith comes into agreement with mine today. Would you give God a, a praise? Here it is, in advance. I can't believe y'all ain't shouting. I said praise them in advance. We got to go. The musicians are bothering me. Would you? Would you just hug three people and tell them I never would have made it? I... But now I see that you were there for me. Said I never, never would have made it. Oh, I never, never would have made it. Listen to me. On this is the first Sunday of the year, the first day of the rest of your life. Softly minstrels, I'm, I'm believing God for a harvest. God woke me up five o'clock this morning with you on my mind. I want you to be a part of a healthy church. Part of a church that is holistic in its intention. Not just focus on your soul, but wants every part of you to walk in the rhythm of God. Wherever you are in this room and you're saying, Pastor, you got no idea, you're talking to me. If you're in this place and you're saying, Pastor, this got to be my church for 2020. This going to be where I'm going to blossom, where I'm going to grow. Here it is. This is where I'm going to be planted. That's where you are. I want you to come. Don't let nothing stop you till you get to me. Get your stuff. Get your bag. Get your jacket. Get your wrap. Get down here. You know you weren't supposed to make it. Y'all really ain't gonna shout for him? I'm better, so much better. I'm waiting on, I'm waiting on you. You really gonna sit there like we ain't waiting on you? I made it, I made it. We've been waiting all year for you to get here. Now you're going to treat us like that? Get down here. Come on, I never. Without you. Are y'all going to shout for this harvest? I can't believe my eyes right now. Never. Never would have made it. Y'all, we got a traffic jam. Give God glory. Come on.
I'm looking for another wave. They're coming without surfboards. There's another wave coming. I don't know where y'all are, but the 10 of you that know you're supposed to be at this altar, would you come meet me at this altar, please? The 10 of you, you know where you are. You know who I'm talking to. Would you hurry up and come? Come on, I want you to hurry up and come. Y'all still ain't doing it. I said, hurry up and come. Now, if y'all think I'm going to do all the work and you're going to get off scot-free, you got another thing coming. Y'all got to help me, please. I need you, come on. He said, go make disciples. I want all of you, no matter where you are, no matter how you got here, who invited you, everything that happened in your life was setting you up for today. Did y'all hear what I just said? Everything that happened in your life was setting you up for this moment. The layoff, the disappointment, the divorce, the death, the debt, all of it was for your deliverance. I need you to do me a favor, please. Would you do a road check real quick? Do a road check for me. Ask the people on your road. If they start stuttering, bring them to me. If they avoid eye contact, bring them to me. Here they come, y'all. Come on, I never. Would have made it without you. When I lost my mind, alone. Stretch your right hand to faith. Stretch your right hand to faith. I want you to repeat after me. You're in the right place at the right time. Joining the right church. Serving the only God. Hold on, here comes a whole new crew. Come on, give God glory for them. Listen. If you're a part of us virtually and you're saying, Pastor, I live in Arizona, I live in Arkansas, I, I live in Alabama, but I want to be a part of New Birth. I want you to be a part of our virtual family. I want you to join right now on our website, newbirth.org. Would you give God a hand clap of praise for those who are joining from around the world? All right, let's try it one more again. They still coming, y'all. I'm trying to stop. Never! They still coming. Come out, come out wherever you are. Would have made it without you. All right, stretch your right hand to faith. Never mind. They still coming. Give God glory for this young lady without you. Thank you for keeping me love. All right, stretch your right hand to faith. Stretch your right hand to faith. Repeat after me. You're in the right place at the right time. Joining the right church. Serving the only God. And I know that's right. Show you right. Come on, would you give big ups to the Savior right there? Let me ask if you'll help me, please, those of you who are here. We believe uh, that you don't have to be spooky to be spiritual. Amen. Uh, so nobody's going to try to make you fall out. We're not going to throw oil on your wig. Don't worry about none of it. I, I want you, please, if you'll follow our new members out this way, we just want to give you some information. New birth, they came as friends. They leaving as family. Would you give God some praise? Come on, I never said I never would have made it. Never would have made it. I never could have made it. Never would have made it. Without, Without you. you. I would have gave up a long time ago. But you were right there to carry me. So, so, so. 
I need you to do me a favor. Well, Y'all stay right here. Clap for those who are... Who are What's his name? Oh, uh, wow. You done messed me up, sir. Lord, this time I didn't see you. I, I, I need you, uh, I want the sisters to be seated and just the men to remain standing. Hallelujah. I ran into this gentleman on yesterday. Men, shut your right hand to faith towards him. It's one of the bravest men I've ever met in my life. One of the most spiritually grounded men I've ever met in my life. He models what it means to be a priest in his home. I ran into him uh, on uh, yesterday, and uh, his daughter was uh, one of those that was uh, trapped in R. Kelly's house. And... Uh, Police wouldn't listen to him, couldn't get any help anywhere, and he and his wife just kept praying and believing God. And uh, I'm believing God with him that a miracle is going to happen for the restoration. I need, uh, if I've got uh, any fathers in the room who ha have had a daughter run away from home, I need you to come stand with him very quickly. I need you, if you've had a daughter run away from home, you had a daughter in a relationship that you didn't approve of, I, I need you to get here. I need this brother covered uh, so that he knows he's not in it by himself. Come on, come on, this is new birth. Come on, I can't hear nobody. Not seen his daughter in almost three years. Softly, musicians. Not seen his daughter in almost three years. Come on, mother, y'all stand with him. And uh, we're believing that God is getting ready to do complete healing. Has had to carry that burden. I pray that this is the year of reconciliation. God, I pray you'll bring this daughter back to her father. Thank you for trusting her with a praying father who believes you can make all things new. God, I pray that you'll cover this wife, cover his two younger daughters. I pray that this family will be whole, healthy, and happy. And those of you, your faith comes into agreement, not just with him, but for every daughter that is in sex trafficking. Come on, open up your mouth and give God glory for him. Men, I need y'all to make some noise. Let this father know he ain't in it by himself. Yes. Bless the Lord. I ask that uh, one of our deacons, if you'll take them to new members, Gary, that'll help me. You may be seated right where you are. We, we're getting ready to move in just, uh, in just one moment. Amazing thing happened. You remember this woman with the issue of blood? The Bible says that she tried every doctor and instead of getting better, she got worse. And then she thought to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, everything is gonna be made whole. Amazingly, ladies and gentlemen, you're not gonna believe it. After she got healed, nobody pays attention to the fact that she never told Jesus thank you. She didn't mind paying the doctors who couldn't help her. But the one who did heal her, she paid no attention to. I want to uh, make a step in faith. I'm finished preaching. Service is almost over. But those of you who are claiming healing for your body this year, claiming healing for a relative who may not even be in this room, healing for a child, the doctors don't even know what to do. I don't want you to spend all your money on doctors that can't help you. But you learn from the plant, if I keep looking at the sun, something is going to happen. 
Now watch what's going to happen. I don't care where you're seated, where you're located in this room. Uh, if you're battling, uh, wrestling with any ailment, any issue, I want you to get a sacrificial seed in your hand. Now watch what's getting ready to happen. Betty Crocker said, for the best results, follow directions. For the best results, follow directions. Hear me. I want you to get that best seed, even our friends who are viewing online. I want you to get your best seed as close to 100 as you can. Why? Because I'm looking for a 100% report on my medical record. Listen to me very carefully. I want you, if you're physically able, I want you to bring that seed and lay it at the altar. Even if you're giving by phone, give LaFi text to give. Uh, if you're giving on our website, I still want you to walk because I want you to see what's getting ready to happen. While you're walking to sow your seed, hear me, new birth, as they pass your road, I want you to start praying for their healing. Those of you who are in this room who got that kind of outlandish faith, get that seed in your hand. Bring it as quickly as you can. Bring it as quickly as you can. You ain't got 100, get 50, get 70, get 20. New birth, you're supposed to be praying now. You're supposed to be praying now. Lord, send it. Lord, send. For this we know. For this. Yes, there is. There is a giving. Bless you, sir. I appreciate you. Even while they're coming, give your attention to the screen for this morning's announcements. Continue in prayer. New birth, grab a pen and get ready because these are your upcoming announcements. Hello, I'm Pastor Kylie Slimmons and I am honored and excited. New birth, grab a pen and get ready because these are your upcoming announcements. Hello, I'm Pastor Kylie Slimmons and I am honored and excited. New birth, grab a pen and get ready because these are your upcoming announcements. Hello, I'm Pastor Kylie Slimmons and I am honored and excited. Okay. New birth, yeah. grab a pen Media ministry, hold it. Thank you so very much. I think Hello, that was Kylie Slimmons and you've grabbed a pen. <laughs> we're so grateful uh, in our video we're sharing with you softly please we're sharing with you we've got three new staff members we met uh, on New Year's Eve and we're grateful to have a new executive assistant pastor Pastor Kyle Lemons he's out with our new members give God a hand clap of praise <laughs> Pastor Kerry who's over our emerging generation uh, as well as uh, Pastor Ross who's a pastor of the internet and innovation. A couple of things I want you to be aware of. Our break is over. We are back in group therapy Tuesday night. Let me tell you how God works this thing out. Tuesday night is our first night of revival and our focus is on miracles, signs, and wonders. Miracles, signs, and wonders Tuesday night. Not only do I want you to come, I want you to bring infirmed family members with you. We're going to make a mandate from the book of Acts to happen. Uh, those of you who had questions about whether the Holy Spirit is real, you better be here on Tuesday night. It's going to be absolutely amazing. Uh, the following Tuesday, uh, Pastor Jer Jasmine Skirlot is going to be here Tuesday after that. Pastor John Guns is going to be here Tuesday after that. Dr. Sean McMillan is going to be here. Tuesday at 6.30. Tuesday at 6.30 uh, is our time management class time management class. Those of you who need a better grasp of your schedule and your time, I need you here Tuesday at 6.30. That will take place in our chapel because revival will commence promptly at 7.30. I got good news for you. Our new members may not know it. Uh, those of you who have been here residentially, you are aware uh, New Birth has its own gym. Come on, somebody give God a hand clap of praise. Got his own gym. Samson's gym is right on our adjacent campus, right on our property. I told you all month I'm preaching on a plant-based diet, right? 
So next Sunday, everybody, softly musicians, everybody next Sunday, wear the church athletic wear. Put on your tennis shoes, put on your sweatpants, your sweatshirt, because we're going to do some exercise in church. I ain't talking about shouting. I'm... <laughs> The black church is the only church in the world that requires a nurse. Y'all falling out because you ain't in shape to shout. So we, <laughs> we got to fix all of that. So next Sunday, all of, us, uh, all of us are dressed down. Let me have all of our entrepreneurs. Would you stand? All of our entrepreneurs stand. <laughs> Remain standing. God put something in my heart. He put something on my heart that uh, this Saturday I'm having breakfast with all of our entrepreneurs uh, because there's a blessing God wants me to release for your business. A blessing God wants me to release for your business. Already 150 entrepreneurs have already uh, signed up. I only have space for 50 more. Those of you who are interested in being a part of our entrepreneurs breakfast is also going to be a time of networking. Ask that you'll go to our website, newbirth.org, and register. New Birth, would you do me a favor? Give God glory for all of our entrepreneurs. You may be seated. Uh, this afternoon is going to be significant. It's going to be historic. Uh, new birth, we're going back to our roots. We're going back to our roots. Uh, new birth came out of Traveler's Rest Baptist Church. Not the greater one, the regular one. Uh, came out of Traveler's Rest uh, Baptist Church. Uh, today is their church anniversary, and they've asked us to come back home uh, at 5 o'clock. It's right on uh, Panola Road. I uh, ask as many of you that possibly can and will, uh, would y'all please come support your pastor? I don't know these people. Don't send me by myself. Amen. So I need y'all to come and join me at 5 o'clock, 5 o'clock at Tra Traveler's Rest Baptist Church uh, for their anniversary. Give God a hand clap of praise, please. Some of y'all are acting brand new. How many of you all were raised old school, you used to be in church all day? Come on, I'm talking about how many of y'all went to church where you could smell them cooking the stuff in the back? That y'all had to let the guest church eat first because they was coming off the bus and you were trying to find out if their choir was better than y'all's. Y'all don't remember that. Amen. Uh, and so I uh, ask that you, as many of you that can and will, uh, ask that you'll do. Pastor Ross, if you'll come quickly. Uh, we've got a challenge for all of you. Uh, our internet innovation pastor has come hit the ground uh, running. He's got a charge and challenge uh, for all of you. Pastor. New birth. We are excited because it has been said that if everything is important, then nothing is. And in this lockstep with our message this morning, we are starting a limitless new birth. I want you to realize that we're on the verge of doing what we call 20 in 20. Somebody shout 20 in 20. We are going to take the top 20 things that you all tell us you're concerned about and focused on to make your church a better church, a more limitless church, a greater church. And we're going to aggregate your voice and turn it into our top 20 things that we're going to focus on in 2020. We're going to take 10 on the first half. 10 on the second half. How do we get your information? It's real simple. Download the New Birth app. Go to your app store, download, download New Birth Atlanta, and you will be able to see right now a link that will allow you to focus on one thing that you're going to do. If it's not the app, go to our social media pages and follow those social media pages and you can see the link right there. Give us what you're going to focus on in 2020 that's going to make us better, and we're going to take your ideas and make it the focus for a limitless new birth. If you're with me, give yourselves a hand. A limitless new birth. Thank you. Thank you so much. I ask that you'll please, if you're not following us on social media, on all platforms, whether that's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, this week our team is working tirelessly. Uh, we're going to put... Uh, plant-based recipes on all of our pages so that we can get through this thing together. Amen. How many of y'all know it's going to be rough, but I'm going to try it. It's going to be rough, 
but I'm going to try it. I want all of us uh, to be a healthier church uh, by the time this year ends. I ask that you'll please join us on Tuesday and Sunday. I want you to do your best to bring two people with you to church on Sunday. I, I was just amazed and marveled at God uh, that we filled all the way up to the balcony on New Year's Eve. <laughs> I said, God, I need you to do it again. Amen. And so I ask that you'll please, please invite two people uh, with you to church on Sunday. If you enjoyed worship today, would you give God glory? Oh. Now, here is the test on whether you need a plant-based diet. If you got to take a deep breath before you stand up for this benediction and scoot to the end of your seat. This is for you. Would you stand to your feet, please? Stand. Stand. <laughs> Got them. Stand to your feet. Every person, as we leave this place, but never from God's presence, repeat after me, walk with God, and he'll walk with me. Talk with God, and he'll talk with me. Love God, because he first loved me. Lift that hand as high as you see yourself going. Now unto him who's absolutely able to do anything but fail. May God make you sleepless until you help somebody. May God make you restless until you help yourself. May God irritate you until you have enough sense to worship him. And may God bless you until you have to give stuff away. Henceforth, now and forevermore, and the blessed people of God said, Amen. Ask that you'll please go by the bookstore, get your new birth watch, and our book of the month, Maximize the Moment. God bless you.